All right, in this video, we're going to see how to find the vector projection. And the example we're given says find the projection of w onto v, where w is uh, the vector with components 8, negative 3, negative 3, and v is the vector with components 2, 3, 2. In step one, we want to find the role each vector plays um, with the notation um, PROJ subscript U V calculates the projection of E onto U. And we know from the directions that we want the projection of W onto V. Um, and so we would write that as PROJ uh, W onto V. And so the order of those is uh, kind of right to left uh, as you're reading it. That's the projection of W onto V. Now we can follow along with the example where uh, in the general process directions, uh, U is like RV and V is like our W. Um, now for step two, it doesn't matter. We're just finding the dot product that's commutative. Um, but we wanna go ahead and stick with the order. And so we'll do the dot product of V and W. And for the dot product, we will multiply component-wise and then add those results. So we have two times eight, and then three times negative three, and then two times negative three. And so the dot product of V and W is just one. Um, now you multiply the vector U, which is the subscript one by the dot product from step two. Um, so our subscript vector is V. This is the vector we're projecting onto. Um, and so for us, it would look like V dot W times V. Um, and so that's just one times Z, um, which is just V. Um, but let's just show how we would do that if we're multiplying one or any constant times a vector, uh, we would multiply it uh, by distributing that. And so multiply each component by that, right? And so it'd be two times one. Let's put the one in front. One times two, one times three, and one times two. So that's how you'd multiply a vector by a scalar. Um, but here they're all ones, and so we just get back V. Uh, that's our vector two, three, two. Uh, in step four, we find the square of the magnitude of the vector we're projecting onto, the subscript one, which is V. And so for us, it's the magnitude of V squared, um, which is V dot V. And the way you get the magnitude squared is you do the sum of the squares of the components. So we have two squared, and you should do these in parentheses, though here it doesn't make a difference. All right, this should always be positive. So four, nine, and four, and that'll give you 17. All right, and then you take the result of step three, uh, that vector two, three, two, and divide it by the result of step four, that 17. Uh, and that should give you your projection. So the projection of W onto V, two, three, two, over 17. Um, and we can bring that in. Like that, so there's our projector, two over 17, three over 17, two over 17. The most common mistake with these problems um, is mixing up the two vectors. The, this is the projection of W onto V. The projection of V onto W would give you the opposite result um, and uh, would be a different vector. So be careful with that. Um, now there's some other problems and I kind of added on some extra steps in this methodology to help with some of those other homework problems. Um, so we're going to next find the scalar projection and the orthogonal projection.
So the scalar projection is sometimes written as COMP, um, and it's the magnitude of the projection. So the scalar projection of W onto V should be the magnitude of the projection of W onto V, um, which we saw was, we know the magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares, and we saw it was 2 over 17, 3 over 17, and 2 over 17. Right. And that should give you square root of 17 over 17. The orthogonal projection um, is actually uh, this piece. Right. If you think of projecting V onto you, um, you see the projection of V onto you drawn there going along with you. The orthogonal projection, uh, which just has a little kind of upside down T in front of it, is the other piece, the other component of the vector you're projecting. And so you can find that by taking the vector v minus the projection of v onto you, um, because those projection and orthogonal projection should add up to v, right, as they're the components. Um, so for us, it would be the orthogonal projection of w onto v, and that should be um, w minus the projection of w onto v. Right? And so w um, was 8, negative 3, negative 3, and then the projection 2 over 17, 3 over 17, 2 over 17. And when you subtract those, you should get 134 over 17, just subtracting component-wise. So uh, that first component is 8 minus 2 over 17. Um, the second one is negative 3 minus 3 over 17. So just doing that in a calculator. That's the orthogonal projection. <clears throat> On step eight, we're going to validate this. And um, one way to do that, since we have this uh, triangle kind of worked out, um, think of that as A, and that is B, and this is C, then it should satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Um, C squared is the magnitude of V squared, and then A squared um, is the result from step six squared, right? That's already the projection, magnitude of the projection there. Um, and then for the orthogonal one, you would need to find the magnitude of that. So let's do that with our problem. We'll start by finding the magnitude of the orthogonal projection, uh, you know, it's always the same square root of the sum of the squares, right? Um, but we here we want it squared, so we'll omit the square root and just do the sum of the squares. And so just square each component and add those up. And that should give you 1,393 over 17. Um, we already have uh, the projection. If we square the projection of W onto V, um, that will just give us 1 over 17. Um, and then we can compare that with the magnitude of W squared, which is, right, there's the components of W. So 8 squared, 64 plus 9 plus 9, which is 82. 
Um, and then kind of setting this up as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, we would have 1 over 17 plus 1, 3, 9, 3 over 17 should equal 82. Let me just put that in a calculator to check, and it should work out. Um, another thing we can do is by graphing, another validation technique. And so with the 3D graphing, we're going to use GeoGebra again. Uh, and again, uh, if you didn't see the last video with Sphere, well, actually, we didn't do a vector that one. So we did, um, but we vectors are, and points are the same format. So for points, use capital letters. For vectors, use lowercase letters. Uh, and so for V, do the lowercase V, and then just put the components in separated by commas. So there's the vector or the components 2, 3, 2. And then for W, 8, And we can change the colors to this a little easier to follow. So there's those two vectors. And we're going to project W onto V. You think about the way the projection works, um, right? This is W and this is V. Um, and so the component of W that's in the direction of V, well, they're almost at a right angle. If their vectors are at a right angle, the projection will be zero because that dot product will be zero. Um, but actually, I'm gonna exaggerate at this W. <laughs> You drew a straight line, which I can't do. Um, you'd see that there's like a little component of W that's in that direction of V. Um, and so that's what we're gonna look for. And so what we'll do is we'll put in the projection vector that we found, and it should be moving in the same direction as V parallel to that. Um, and it should just be a small little piece of that. So let's, do that. Uh, we'll call this U. So U is the projection of W onto V. Uh, remember we found it was 2 over 17, 3 over 17, 2 over 17. Let's make it bright green. And then we don't see it. Um, these numbers are really small, so we may need to zoom in. And there it is. And so that kind of validates what we were looking for. Again, they're almost at a right angle. And so this, if you project W on, it does just have like a little component uh, in the direction of V. So you're looking for that projection to be parallel to the vector you're projecting onto, which is V. Um, and then the size of it depends on how close these angles are to being parallel versus being at right angles. They're right angles to each other. Um, the projection zero, if they're parallel, then the projection will be at the full magnitude of, of the vector you're projecting. Right. Um, so that'll wrap it up for this video ready to go on to the uh, fill in the blanks in your turn examples